And let's start with the grid city model. Therefore, please open the file one underline grid city and grasshopper. And what you should see after you open the file is this simulation model in grasshopper. And on in Rhino, you should see this grid, um, these gray grids, or maybe in your case, they are already colored. If you don't see the preview of the geometry in Rhino, just click on one of the components in the beginning and activate it and right mouse click on the canvas and press zoom. And this will zoom into the uh, geometry that is generated by the selected component. Okay, before we start, I want to give you an overview of the definition. So at the top you see the required plugins and what you need for the simulation is the Anemone plugin and the Human plugin and it's always good if you have installed the Meta Hopper. The simulations are usually structured in a way that you have on the right hand side the inputs and somehow the preparation to run the simulation model. In the middle you will see or you find the the dynamic simulation model itself. So here we have our Anemone loop components with which you are already familiar from the last module. And here in the green box, we find the content of the model itself. So what happens in an iteration of our simulation. And usually I place a debug window in the center that I can connect the outputs of my C sharp components, which I use to run the simulation or to represent the main mechanisms. So this allows me to debug it here. And on the uh, right hand side, we find the outputs of the model. So usually here we track some developments by graphs or we collect data um, about the population, the stock of the population. Or what we do here is we uh, have a very, very simple model to estimate the traffic that is caused by our land use distribution of population and workplaces, which we will see later. And at the bottom you find the components for visualization, which I will not explain in detail in this lesson. You should be familiar, <coughs> familiar in general with the Grasshopper components from the course Urban Modeling or Parametric Urban Modeling. Okay, let's start on the right hand side to see what or how we start with the simulation. So that's the, the setup. We create this grid, um, which is done by using the grid component without GR in the right, uh, the left mouse button. You see from where it comes from, it's a vector and creates this grid. So that's this green grid. And here you can control the number of rows and columns of the grid. We use an offset component to reduce the grid to create a kind of abstract street blocks with the streets in between the blocks. And here we uh, compute our center points of the grid cells of our blocks, which we need for the later processing in our model. That's our basic setup, quite uh, straightforward with existing grasshopper components. So the first step um, or the first script that I implemented here is for calculating the distances between all the grid cells. Because in our simulation, distances will play a crucial role to define which usage, which um, function in my city is closer to my location or to a certain location and to decide the influence of two locations um, to each others. So in our lecture on uh, models, there was also the, the idea introduced that um, the, the nearness of or the, the distances of things to each others, that's one of the basic laws of geomet uh, geography that the closer things are, the more relevant they are for me or for something at a certain location. Okay, um, let's open the C-sharp distance script by double clicking on the uh, component. And this opens a script that is used for a very simple 
computation, what we do is we compute the distances between all the cells to each other. What you find here is basically a nested loop. So we use this um, to go through all the cells in the first for loop. So the cells are represented by a list of points that's coming from the generated grid. And I read these points, these are point 3D, and I iterate through all of them. And the second loop is the same thing. So I iterate here through all the points again. And what I do in the inner loop is that I compute the distances between my points. So first I start with this cell, for example, in the outer loop, and then I run through all the cells in the inner loop to compute the distance from this cell to this and to that and the next one. So from here to all the other cells. So this happens when I'm in the first iteration of this loop, and then I iterate through all the other cells. Then the next step in the outer loop is from the next cell again to all the other cells. This could be done a little bit smarter to um, reduce the number of distance computations, but for uh, the sake of simplicity, we keep it as it is here. And what we use um, is uh, a data tree to store the distances. So that's relevant for our simulation because um, I store these distances in the distance tree. Here you see a visualization of a distance tree. It's a very simple tree in my case with only one level. So here one level of branches, these lines, these are the first level of branches in my tree. And uh, what you see here, the GH path. So here I um, create the data tree as a, I call it distance tree. And I make a new instance of the data tree. And I say in my data tree, I store variables of the type bubble. And these bubble values, they are my distance values that I compute. To store a value in a branch of my tree, I need to create this path, so the GH path. This is the address of one of my branches, so of one of the lines that you can see here. And that's done um, just by saying, okay, GH path, and that's the address of the path or the index of my path. So I've just used the iterator variable i from my outer loop. So I say, okay, from the, all the distances from the first cell to all the other cells is stored in the branch number zero, because I start here with i equals to zero. And in this branch, I will add all the values in the same order as they are stored in the list of points. So I put here a list of distance values into the first branch. So what you see if you go um, with your mouse over the distance output, you see there are 6400 values. And in the branch number zero, which is marked by this curly bracket, I have 80 entrances. And these are 80 because I have 80 cells in my system. So I've used here a grid um, with the value 10 to 8 um, x and y cells. So these are all my distances in the tree. And how I add it to the tree, this is what you can see here. So I say distance tree, that's my data tree, add the current distance that I computed here and the path. So this adds this path, uh, this distance to the first path. So you can imagine, or it's, the idea is that you add the value in the same way as you add it to a list. That's why we use here the add. But the list is more complicated. It has a lot of branches in this case. So here we have um, all these branches. They contain lists in these dots. That's just the visualization for it. Okay, so the data trees are a little bit complicated to understand, but I think in this example, it's not too difficult. A few words to the distance computation itself. So what I do here is I use the math apps. So this computes the absolute value to be sure that it's always positive. Also, if I compute it in 
the in the wrong direction. Wrong means in a, that I would have a negative value. And I compute the Manhattan distance means I only add the x and y distances between two cells because I am here in a grid. That, um, I don't use the diagonal paths through blocks. I always go through the streets and this means I go to the x and the y to um, find my distance between two cells. And that's um, also very efficient in terms of computing time because I don't need to multiply, divide or do some more complicated um, operations that you would need to compute uh, the real distance and the, the bird fly distance. There you also need a, a square that you compute here. So that's the first very simple script. You shouldn't have a problem to understand it based on your knowledge from programming. In the end, it's a nested loop, two for loops put inside each other to compute my distance matrix, how I will call it in the following. And this will be sent um, to or as an input to my simulation model, which we will see in the next step how we process these distances.